Hello, my name is Russell Preston Brown from Adobe Systems, and in this tutorial, I'm going to discuss a brand new plugin that works here inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. This plugin works directly with a Ricoh Theta Z1. Now, here are the basics. Normally, when you shoot a 360 image with the Theta Z1, you get a rectilinear image that you see here. It's stitched together for you, and it gives you a JPEG image. But here, with this new plugin, you can now capture a raw image inside of your Theta Z1, share that raw image, in this case, with Adobe Lightroom Classic, and you can do the stitching and color correction all at the same time. Now, the benefits of this are, of course, you have a raw image that you're working with, with a bit more dynamic range and higher resolution, but there's more. You can now process this and have much more control over the warping of the image, and we'll see that in a minute. So I'm going to go through the step-by-step -step process of installing this new plugin into Lightroom Classic, because it's a bit tricky. To begin with, I'm going right over here to the Rico Theta website. And here I'm downloading, in this case, for the Macintosh right here. I can also download for the Windows. Then you can see over here to the right the downloaded package from Rico. I'm going to double click on this package and launch this. In this process, I'm not installing this into Lightroom Classic. I'm simply installing this into the Applications folder, in this case, here on the Macintosh. So the installation process is not done yet. The next step is to go to, in this case, Adobe Lightroom Classic. Here on the Macintosh, I've selected one of my images that I've captured with my Ricoh Theta Z1. It's the raw image. You can see here it's a DNG image displayed right here. Then I'm going to go up here to the File menu and down to Export, right here. In this dialog, I need to make some selections. To start with, I'm going to export the results using this plugin to the same folder as the original photos, as you see here. Down here, and very important, I'm selecting TIFF as my file format here, and 16-bit. I want to maintain as much of the detail and quality of the original as I can, and I'm going to save this in 16-bit, and I'm going to use a color space of Adobe RGB in this case. So these selections right here, very important. Next down here, under post-processing, that's where it can get a little tricky, and watch this carefully. Here, under After Export, right here, I'm going to select this and go down to Open in Other Application, right here. Then, over here, I'm going to select Choose. At this time, you need to locate the Rico Theta Stitcher. It has loaded it onto your Macintosh or your PC. Here you can see on the Macintosh, it's placed this inside of the Applications folder. And here I can see the Rico Theta Stitcher. I'm going to select that, then select Choose. This step is so critical and can get a little confusing. Once you've selected that, now you can select Export, right down here. Wait for it. A new dialog will appear, as you see here. It will then give you a preview of the stitched image, the two Spheres are then stitched together in this preview. But wait! This is the really exciting part. Right here, you can now make manual setting adjustments by selecting right here. If, for example, your Theta Z is slightly crooked on the tripod when you take an image, it can warp the image. Notice that I can adjust the pitch or the roll. I can also double-click on those settings 
and they'll snap back to the default setting. Notice what roll does to the image. So you can make some adjustments to your image to gain that perfect alignment with the horizon, for example, by adjusting the pitch and roll. You can also decide where the subject is within your image with the yaw. Notice I can then slide the image from left to right here on this adjustment here at the bottom. And once again, double click to set it back to its default. In most cases, I use the automatic settings, but this manual setting adjustments are really fantastic. The next thing you do is click OK. Now the file will be then saved in the TIFF format into my designated folder. And in this case, I switch over to Adobe Bridge where I continue my project. Here you can see all of my DNG images, but if I target to just view the TIFF images here, I can see the image that we just exported right here. I can do most of my adjustments inside of Lightroom Classic, but I can also open it up here into Adobe Camera Raw, here from Bridge, and continue to process the image before I export it. There you have it. Those are the basics of installing this new plugin and using the plugin inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Give it a try.